Ashley Brock Green, Nora Roberts book, Sea Sweat, Chapter 18, and I'm really trying to get this all done, because I've only got 18, Chapter 18, Chapter 19, Chapter 20 to go, but I don't think I'm going to make it, it's 11 o'clock at night, <sighs> so here's Chapter 18 of Sea Sweat. Anna wasn't sure how she felt about seeing Cam frown in concentration as he tuned up a battered old Gibson guitar. It was a piece of him she hadn't counted on. It surprised her, pleased her, to see how smoothly, how easily the three men had slid into a song. Strong voices, she moves, quick and clever fingers, teamwork, once again, and unbroken family ties. Without a doubt, there had been many evenings such as this in their lives. She could imagine the three of them, years younger, melding their tunes with the two people who had given them the music, the purpose, and the family sitting in the room with them. She took that image and the music upstairs with her when she finally went to bed, to Cam's bed, and reminded herself there was a child in the house. She locked the door in case Cam came tiptoeing up from his makeshift bed on the sofa downstairs. She told herself she wouldn't unlock it if it came tapping. No matter how sexy he looked strumming the, that old guitar to life, most of the tunes had been old Irish ballads and pub songs that she'd been unfamiliar with. She found them sad and heart-wrenching, even when the tune beneath the words were, was lively. They mixed in some rock and sneered at Seth when he suggested they play something from this century. It had been sweet, Anna thought, as she undressed. They would never think of it that way, and would likely be horrified that anyone else did. But sweet was how she'd seen it. Four males, four brothers, not of the blood, but of heart. It was easy to see how well they understood each other, and how they had come to just not accept the child, but to include him. When Seth commented that violins for girls in wusses, Ethan merely smiled, went to a hot lick designed to capture Seth's interest in imagination. And Ethan's dry comment, let's see a wuss do that. Earned a shrug and a grin from Seth. When Seth fell, had fallen asleep, they just left him there, sprawled on the rug with puppy's head pillowed on his butt, another belonging in Anna's mind. She slipped into her nightshirt and picked up her hairbrush. This house was an easy place to fill belonging. Big, simple rooms lived in furniture, noisy plumbing. She got a few female touches that hadn't been there before. Glimmed to the furniture, the odd vase of spring flowers, compliments of the housekeeper, Anna imagined, which probably went largely unnoticed by the occupants. If it were her her house. She wouldn't change much, she decided, dreaming again as she ran the brush through her hair. Maybe spruce up some of the colors, add a bit of dash here, and there were thick throw pillows and splashier flowers. She definitely wanted to expand the gardens. She'd been doing some reading on perennials. What worked best in sun, what thrives in shade. There was a nice spot where the trees began to take over from the yard. She thought Lily of the Valley, some hostesses, and prairie winkles would be well there and add some interest. Wouldn't it be lovely? She reflected. To well, to well away a Saturday morning, digging in the earth, crowding pretty bedding plants together, planting the flower, flow of collars and textures and heights, and to watch them grow and spread and bloom year after year. A movement outside the window caught her eye in the mirror. Her heart sprang into her throat as she saw the shadow move behind the dark glass. As the window crept open, she turned slowly, holding the brush like a weapon. Cam stepped out over his own. Hi. He had enjoyed watching her brush her hair. Hey, did see yourself. Roger something. He held out a clutch of wild violets, which she tried to eye suspiciously. Just how did you get up here? Climb. He stepped forward. She stepped back. Climbed what? Up the side of the house, mostly. Used to be able, able to shimmy up and down the gutter, but I weighed low, less than. He came closer. She moved back. That was clever of you. What have you fallen? Climbed sheer rock boy faces in Montana, Mexico, and France, but he smiled woodenly at her concern. You'd have felt sorry for me. I don't think so, since he had maneuvered his way to arm's length. She reached out and snatched the slightly crushed flowers. Thanks for the violets. Good night. <laughs> Interesting. He decided. Her voice and her expression were prim, despite the fact that she was standing there in nothing more than a long white t-shirt. For some reason, he found the plain, practical cotton ridiculously sexy. It appeared he was finally going to get the chance to seduce her. I couldn't sleep. He reached over, hit the light switch, left only the small bedside lamp burned in warm and go. He didn't try very long. She simply got the switch back on again. Seemed like hours. He lifted a hand to trace his finger lightly up her arm from wrist to elbow. Her skin was dusky, golden, against the pure white of the nightshirt. All I could think about was you. Beautiful Anna, he said softly. It was the Italian eyes. Her toes seemed to curl in response to that skimming finger, which moved now to trace her jawline. Her heart was fluttering. No, it was her stomach. No, it was everything. Cam, there's a young boy in the house. Who's that asleep? 
Singers dipped her throat, testing the rapid pulse beat in there. Snoring on the living room rug. You should have carried him off to bed. Why? Because there had to be a good reason. But how was she supposed to think clearly when he was looking at her? With slit gray eyes so focused, so intense on her face. You planned this, she said weakly. Not exactly. I thought I would have to talk you into going for a walk in the woods after the house quieted down. Then I worked. I would make love to you outside. I took her hand, turned her palm up, and pressed his lips with her in the starlight. The rain's coming in. Rain? She glanced out the window and saw the curtains bellowing and the freshened wind. When she looked back, he was closer, and his arms were round her. His broad palm, his broad palm, clever hand stroking up her back. I don't want you in bed. My bed. He tipped his head to nibble kisses along her jaw, and just under it, where the skin was soft as one. I don't want you, Adam. Day and night. Tomorrow? She began. Tonight. Tomorrow. The word always was on the edge of his mind when his mouth found hers. She's made. She made a small sound that might have been distress. When his tongue slipped through her parted lips to deepen the kiss, went deeper, still deeper, till she had no choice but to let herself sink. The pretty little flower stripped it to the floor. As her fingers went limp, he had kissed her like this only once before, with such unspeakable tenderness that it stripped her so bare. If she could have formed words, she would have babbled out her love for him. But her knees were jelly, her heart lost, and words were behind her, beyond her. He barely touched her, just those hands light on her back while his mouth drank from hers in the shorter. It's not a race this time. He heard himself murmur the words, but wasn't sure if he spoke to himself or her. All he knew was he wanted slow, painfully slow, endlessly slow, so that he could savor every moment, every move, every moan. He reached out, dim light. I want this spot. He whispered and let his mouth journey along the fragile skin just on her jaw again. again. And this one, to the slender column of her throat, where her scent was warm and smoky. When he stepped back and tucked his shirt over his head, she took a breath. She would get her feet back under her, she thought. They offered back some of what he was giving her. She reached for him, rose on her toes, and rose on her toes until their eyes and mouth lined up. But he kissed her temples, her bro, her eyes when they fled close. I love looking at you. He told her he took the hem of her nightshirt in his fingers and lifted it inch by inch. All of you, even when you're not around, I have a picture of him in my head. When her nightshirt was pulled onto the floor, he kept his eyes on her face, lifted her in his arms, felt her tremble, and he knew, one breath stealing flash, that he never wanted another woman the way he wanted Anna. This time, when he laid her on the bed, it was he who sank mindless into the kiss. He didn't have to order his hands to be gentle, to go slowly. He didn't have to hold back and urge to plunder. Not when she sighed so softly under his touch. Not when she moved so fluently beneath his hands. Not when she gave so completely before he could ask. He explored her with a kind of wonder, as if it were the first time. The first woman. The first need. Somehow it was new. This longer longing to linger. To sip instead of go to glide instead of race when her hands roamed over him his skin his skin quivered and warmed neither of them heard the first soft patters of rain or the low potent moan of the wind she rose to peak on one long shimmering wave floated down again breathing out his name pleasure was liquid soft as morning dew White as dark sea, she could feel it sliding through her, shifting, spreading, taking her up on another high, curving crest, where only he existed. She pressed her mouth to his throat, his shoulder, would have absorbed him into her skin if she'd known away. No one had ever taken her away so completely, and when she framed his face, brought his mouth to hers, and poured all she was into the kiss, she knew he was with her, absolutely hers. When he filled her, it was only one more link she opened took him and gave they moved together slowly breath, breath tangled gazes locked moved together silkenly rhythms matched to draw out every ounce of pleasure it built dizzying and dazzling so that her lips curved even as her eyes swore kiss me she made it on one last trembling breath so their mouths met clung as the last sweeping wave swamped them he didn't speak didn't dare when her hand slid limply from his back to the bed he felt as if he thumbed Thumped off a cliff, falling hard on his heart. Now his heart was swollen, exposed, and it was hers. This was love. Scared the hell out of him, but he couldn't move, couldn't let her go. She felt so good, so right beneath him. His body's weak, sated, his mind closed empty. It was only his heart that trembled and pumped. He would worry about it later. Say nothing, nothing at all. 
shifted, drew her close, possessively close, to his side, let the low rain lull him to sleep. Anna woke with the sun shooting into her eyes, and was stunned to find herself wrapped up in Cam. His arms had a good strong hold on her, and hers were snug around him. <laughs> Their legs were tangled with a right hook over his hip like an anchor. If her mind had been clear, it might have occurred to her that while they both assumed their affair was casual, even sophisticated, in sleep they both known better. She slid her leg down, opened a knot their limbs, but he only shifted and anchored hers more firmly. But anchored her. Anchor her more from Cam, she whispered, feeling foolish and guilty, and when she received no response, we are going to speak more from Cameron, wake up. He grunted, snuggled closer, muttered something into her hair. She sighed, decided she had no choice, lifted the leg that was caught between his torn knee, pressed firmly against his crotch, then she gave him a quick nudge. That got his eyes over. Whoa, what? Wake up. I'm awake. <laughs> and, it's just, and he just opened eyes for all the crops. Would you mind moving your... When the pressure eased off, he let out the breath he'd been holding. Thanks. <laughs> you gotta go. She was back to whisper. You shouldn't have stayed in here all night. Why not? He was like, it's my bed. You know what I'm talking about? She was, one of your brothers could get up any minute. He exerted him, exerted himself to lift his head. A couple of inches appeared at the clock on the opposite night. Said, it's after seven. Ethan's already up. It's probably the empty his first crab pot. And why are we whispering? Because you're not supposed to be in here. I live here. The sleep smile moved over to me. Damn, you're pretty when you're all rumpled and burst. I guess I have to have you again. Stop it! She nearly giggled as his hand snuck around a cup for breast. Not now. We're here now, naked and everything. And you're all soft and warm. He nuzzled his way to her neck. Don't be a start. Too late. I'm already in the first lap. Indeed, when he shifted, she understood that the starting gun had already sounded. He was inside her in one easy move. And it was so smooth, so natural, so lovely, she could only sigh. No moaning. He said, well, chuckle out of here. You'll wake up, my brothers. She snorted out of that. Caught him between amusement and arousal. Shoved him, shoved and rolled onto until she straddled him. He looked sleepy and dangerous and exciting. A little breathless, she braced her hands on either side of his head. She went down and suckled his bottom lip in her mouth. Okay, smart guy. Let's see who moans first. And Archie back, she began to ride. Afterward, they decided it was a tie. She made him climb out the window, which he claimed was ridiculous, but it made her feel a little less this desolate. The house was quiet when she came downstairs, freshly showered and comfortable on all drab cotton slacks and a camp shirt. Seth was still sleeping on the rug, fully stood guard on the floor. At the sight of Anna, the pup scrambled up, whining pitifully as he followed her into the kitchen. She assumed it was either an empty stomach or a full batter. She opened the back door and shot out like a bullet. And proved it was the latter by being <laughs> capriciously on her azaleas just struggling in the bloom. Birds were singing with full, jewelful throats. Deep sparkled on the grass, and the grass needed mowing. There was still a light mist of, on the water, but it was burning off quickly, like blown smoke. And though it, if, and through it, she could see light and little diamond sparks of sunlight on calm water. The air was fresh from the night's nice rain, and the leaves seemed greener, fuller than they had only a day before. She put a little fantasy that included steaming coffee and walked down to the dock. But upon she'd taken the first step toward brewing the coffee, Cam came in through the hallway door. He hadn't shaved, she noted, and found that the stubble of a beard suited her image of a lazy Sunday morning in the country. He lifted her bro. She got two mugs out of the cupboard, then lifted her. Good morning, Cameron. Good morning, Anna. Decided to play along, he walked over and gave her a shake's kiss. How did you sleep? Very well, then you... Like a lock. He wound a lock of hair around her. It wasn't too quiet for you. Quiet? Said a girl. Country silence. Oh, no. I liked it. In fact, I don't think I've ever slept better. They were grinning at each other when said. Stumbled in, rubbing his eyes. Have we got anything to eat? <laughs> Camp kept his gaze locked on Anna's. Phil ran his mouth about making waffles. Go wake him up. Waffles! Cool. He ran off his bare feet, slapping on the wood floor. Phil's not going to appreciate that, Hannah commented. He's the one who started the waffle rumor. I could make them. You made dinner. We take turns around here to avoid chaos and the shedding of blood. A loud and noisy thought sounded over their heads in Mary came room. Why don't we pour that coffee and take a walk out of the line of fire? I was thinking the same thing. On impulse, he grabbed the fishbowl. Hold this. 
a hunt through the fridge, netted him a small round of Philip's brie. I thought we were having waffles. We are. This is bait. He tucked the cheese in his pocket and picked up his coffee. You use brie for bait? You use what's handy. A fish is going to bite. It'll bite on damn near anything. He entered a mug of coffee. Let's see what we can catch. I don't know how to fish, said us the head of Nothing to it. You can drown a worm, or in this case, some fancy cheese, and see what happens. Then why do you guys go off with all that expensive, complicated gear and those funny hats? Just trappings. We're not talking dry fly fishing here. We're just dropping a line. We can pull up a couple of cats by the time Philip's got waffles on the table. I've really lost my touch. Cats? For some stunning moment, she was absolutely hard. You don't use cats as bait? He blinked at her. So although she was perfectly serious, then roared with laughter. Sure we do. You catch them by the tail, skin their bellies, and drop them in. Took pity on her only because she went deadly pale. But it didn't stop her from what? Catfish, honey. We're going to bring up some catfish before breakfast. Very funny. She sniffed and started walking again. Catfish are really ugly. I've seen pictures. You're telling me you've never eaten catfish. Why in the world would I? A, a little miss. She sat on the side of the dock, feet dangling, cut her mug in both hands. Fry them fresh and fry them right, and you've never tasted better. Toss them in some hush puffies, a couple ears of sweet corn, and you've got yourself a feast. She eyed him as he settled beside her, began to bait his hook with brie. His chin was stubbled, his hair untidy, his feet bare. Fried catfish and hush puppies. This is from the reckless Cameron Quinn. The man who races through the waters. Roads in the hearts of Europe. I don't think your little pastry from Rome would recognize you. <laughs> he grimaced and dropped a line of We're not going to get into that again, are we? No, she laughed and leaned over to kiss his cheek. I almost don't recognize you myself, but I kind of like it. He handed the ball. You don't exactly look like the somber and dedicated public servant yourself this morning, Miss Spinelli. I take Sundays off. What do I do if I catch a fish? Reel it in. How? We'll worry about that when it happens. He leaned over to pull up the crab pot. Tied to appealing the two annoying looking jimmies inside. Made him At least we won't starve tonight. The snapping claws had Anna lifting her feet slightly higher above the water. What she contained? Tended, but she was content to sit there, sipping coffee and watching the morning bloom. When Mama Duck and her six fuzzy babies swam by, she had what Cam considered a typical city girl reaction. Oh, look! Look, baby ducks! Aren't they cute? We'll get a nest down there in the bend near the edge of the woods most every year. Because she was looking so dreamy-eyed, he couldn't remove this. Makes for good hunting over the winter. Hunting? What? She murmured, charmed and already. Imagine what it would be like to hold one of the puppy ducklings in her hand. Then her eyes popped wide over. You shoot the little ducks? <laughs> well, they're bigger by then. He had never shot a duck or anything else in his life. You can sit right here and drop a couple before breakfast. You should be ashamed. Your city's showing. I'll call it my humanity. If they were my ducks, no one would shoot them. His quick grin had an airy eye. You were just trying to get a rise out of me. It worked. You look so cute when you're outraged. He kissed her cheek to maul the fire. My mother's heart was too soft to allow hunting. Fisher never bothered her. She said that that was more of an even match. And she hated guns. What was she like? She was steady. He decided. He decided. It was hard to rock her. Once she did, she had a kick-ass temper. But it was tough to get it going. She loved to work, loved the kids. She had a lot of soft spots. She cried at movies or over books, and she couldn't even watch when we cleaned fish. But when there was trouble, she was a rock. He'd taken Anna's hand without realizing it. He's take he'd taken Anna's hand without realizing it, lacing her fingers. When I came here, I was beat up pretty bad. She fixed me up. I kept thinking I'd take off as soon as I was steady on my feet again. I kept telling myself these people were a couple of assholes. I could rob them blind and take off anything I wanted. I was going to Mexico. But he didn't take off, and I said quietly. I fell in love with her. It was the day I got back from my first sale with Dad. This world had opened up for me. It was like I was a little scared of it. But there it was. He went inside to grab some pa grades and papers, I think. I was making bitching noise about having to wear that stupid life jacket. Just general bullshit. She took me by the hand pulled me right into the water. She said, then I'd better learn to swim. And she taught me. Fell in love with her about ten feet out from this dock. Couldn't drag me away from here. Moved, Anna lifted their joined hands searching. 
I wish I'd had the chance to meet her, to meet both of them. He shifted, suddenly realizing that he told her story he never shared with anyone. I didn't remember the way he sat here the night before talking to her. Do you, uh, believe that people come back? From? You know, ghosts, spirits, twilight zone stuff. I don't believe it. She said after, after my mother died, there were times when I could smell perfume just out of the blue, out of the air. The scent that was so her... Maybe it was real, maybe it was my imagination, but it helped me. That's what counts, I suppose. Yeah, but... Oh! She nearly dropped the post. But something's on here. Take it. Uh-uh, you caught it. He decided the distraction was for the best. Another minute or two, he might have made a total fool of himself. Told her everything. He reached it over to steady ball. Reel it in some. Then let it play out. That's it. No, don't jerk. You're slow and steady. It feels big. Her heart was thunder between her. Really big? They always do. You got it now. Just keep bringing it in. He rose to get the net that always hung over the edge of the dock. Bring her up. Open out. Anna leaned back. Eyes half shut. <laughs> they popped wide when the fish came flashing. Wriggling out of the water and into the sun. Oh my God! <laughs> Don't drop the pole for God's sake. Shake with laughter. Can grip the shoulder. Before she could pitch herself into the water, Lena forward, he netted the flopping fish. Nice one. What do I do? What do I do now? Ex Expertly cam freed fish from hook, then to her whore, handed her the full net. Hang on to it. Don't leave me with this thing. She took one squinting look, saw whiskers and fishy eyes. And shut her eyes. Cam, come back here. Take this ugly thing. Set he set the wide mouth pail he just filled with water on the dock, took the net and flopped the catch into a steady girl. She let out a long breath. Like, Maybe. She peeped into the pail. Ugh, throw it back. It's hideous. Not on your life. It's a four pounder, easy. <laughs> when she refused to take the pole a second time, sacrificed the rest of his brother's brain and settled down to catch the rest of that night's supper himself. The reception that her mother's the reception that her morning's work retrieved, received from Seth changed her attitude, impressing a small boy by catching an indisputable, ugly, and possibly gourmet fish was a new kind of triumph. By the time she was driving, came to the boatyard, she decided one of her next projects would be to read up on the art of fishing. I think with the proper bait, I could get something much more attractive than a catfish. <laughs> Want to go dig up some night crawlers next weekend? She tipped down her sunglasses. Are those what they sound like? You bet. She tipped them back up. I don't think so. I think I'd prefer using those pretty feathers and whatnot. She glanced at them again. So do you know your father's secret waffle recipe? Nope. He didn't trust me with it. Figured out pretty fast that I was a disaster in the kitchen. What kind of bribe would work best for Philip? He couldn't warm it out of him with Hermione ties. It only gets passed down to a queen. Eh, they'd, seen about, they'd see about that. She decided to tap her fingers on her knee. She continued tapping them. When he pulled into the lot beside the old brick building, she wasn't sure what reaction he expected from her. As far as she could see, there was little change here. The trash had been picked up. The broken windows were placed. But the building, building still looked ancient and deserted. He cleaned up. It seemed like a safe response. It appeared to safe satisfy him as they got out of the opposite doors of the car. The dog's going to need some work. He coming. Phil Bob be able to handle it. He took out the keys, the shiny, as the new lock on the front door. I guess we need a sign or something. He had. He said half to himself as he unlocked the deadbolts. When he opened the door, Anna caught the scent of sawdust, mustiness, and stale coffee. But the polite smile was fixed on her face, widening in surprise as she stepped inside. Flick on lights and made her blink. They were brilliant overhead, hanging from the rafters and unshaded. The newly repaired floor had been swept clean, or nearly so. Bare drywall angled out on the neat side to form a patreon. The stars had been replaced. The banners were plain wood oiled. The loft of red still looked dangerous, but she began to see the potential. She saw pulleys and wrenches, winches, enormous power tools with wicked teeth, a metal chest with many drawers that she soon held Baffled tools, baffling tools, new steel locks glittered on the wide doors leaning to the dock. This is wonderful, Cam. You do fast. You do work fast. Space my business. He said it lightly, but it pleased him to see that she was genuinely impressed. He had to work like dogs to get this much done. Though she wanted to see everything, it was the huge platform, the center of the bu building, that pulled her forward, drawn out in the dark pencil or chalk, where curves and lines and angles. 
I don't understand this. Fascinated, she shook around. Is this supposed to be a boat? It is. It is a boat. The boat is lofting. You draw the hole full size, the mold section transfers forms, then you test them out by sketching in some longitary curves like the shear, some of the water lines. He was on his knees on the platform as he spoke, using his hands to show her, still leaving her in the dark. But it didn't matter whether she understood the technique he described or not. She understood him. He may not realize it yet, but he had fallen in love with this place, with the work he would do here. We need to add the bow lines and the diagonals. We may want to use this as a sign again, and this is the only way to reproduce it with real accuracy. It's a damn good design. I'm going to want to add in the structural details for full size. The more detail, the better. Looked up and saw her smiling at him, swinging her sunglasses by the ear bears. Sorry. Sorry. You don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I think it's wonderful. I mean it. You're building more than boats here. Family embarrassed, he got to see. Boats. Boats is the idea. <laughs> he jumped nimbly off the platform. Come take a look at these. He caught her hand, led her to the opposite walls. So there were two frame sketches now. One of Ethan's beloved skipjack, and the other of the boat. He has to be built. Seth did them. The pride in his voice was just there. Didn't even notice it. He's the only one of us who can really draw worth a damn. Feels adequate, but the kid is just great. He's on Ethan's work boat next, then the slope. I've got to get some pictures of a couple boats I worked on so we can copy them. We'll hang them all in here and add drawings of the others we've built. Kind of like a gallery. A trademark. There were tears in her eyes. She turned and wrapped her arms around him. Her fierce grip surprised him, but he returned it. More than boats, she murmured and drew back to frame his face in her hands. It's wonderful, she said again, pulled his mouth down to hers. The kiss swarmed through him, swamped him, staggered him. Everything about her, about them, spun around in his heart. Questions, dozens of them, buzzed like bees in his head. And the answer, a single answer to all of them, was nearly within his reach. He said her name, just once, they drew her on suddenly away. He had to look at her, really look, but nothing about him seemed quite on balance. And, uh, he said, Wait a minute. Before he could get a firm grip on the answer, before he could get his feet back under him, the door creaked open, letting in sun and sunlight. Excuse me, folks. McKinney's McKinney said pleasantly. I saw the car out front. End of chapter 18.